Well, to put things technically, we have a wallered out hole in our cast iron heads for our Ford 460 big block. This is what wallered out looks like. Uh, this has got some schmutz in there, but ostensibly these are circular threaded holes. 3816, um, and they take bolts, and uh, the bolts hold the exhaust manifold on. Unfortunately, like I said, since the beginning, we had uh, an exhaust leak here. It was leaking by because this wasn't held tightly, and that's one of the main reasons that I took the engine right out of the truck. The other one being um, that the oil pan gasket, this engine's in here, it should be um, upright, would be like this, so it's tipped over like that. So our oil pan gasket was leaking, and maybe even our front main seal, but we had a, a constant oil drip, which is an unacceptable thing, um, as far as I'm concerned, and we had kind of happening on top of the healthy V8 rumble, um, which is just really annoying. So, uh, we did everything else that I got into as a rabbit hole that I went down when I uh, started working on this engine, including a crank and crank uh, bearings and rod bearings. Now we're putting everything back together, and we had intended, we had a little trouble over here as well, we had intended to put just studs, pieces of all thread, in these holes with high heat epoxy and leave them to set up so every other location would be bolted, but uh, these two locations would have studs that we would put a nut on. Uh, this one has plenty of thread in there, and I think it's going to do us, although I may put helicoil in there if this goes well. Uh, but I can't make this work. The stud just pulled right back out with the cured epoxy on it without almost any torque on it. So we're going to put a helicoil in there. How does a helicoil work? Why would you be watching this video if you didn't know how a helicoil works? I don't know, but uh, in the interests of, of posterity, I guess, uh, this, is to, this would be... Our, I don't want to shade it because I'm going to be drawing on it, but this is our material, and this is our shitty hole that we have that's wallered out. Uh, it used to have threads maybe here or there. It's been stripped. What do you do? Uh, you drill it with the, the drill bit that... I'm going to exaggerate everything here. You don't really take this much out, but you drill it with the, the bit that comes with a helicoil kit. Here's a kit. Those are the helicoils. That, uh, they're in a certain size. They're 3, 8, 16 which is the coarse thread, you get the tap, and you get the insulation tool. So uh, you have to drill it a certain size, I guess you don't get the drill bit. You drill it a certain size, which they tell you to drill, and then you tap it, uh, which cuts threads into the new hole that you drilled, like this. Okay, and then you thread in one of these helicoils into that threaded hole, which ends up putting in cross section, the helicoil is in there like this. I'll finish this up so you can see, but this is, you know, one coil, another coil in cross section. Um, but in doing so, you make a new hole, and because these are precision machined, you make a new hole that is the inside surface of the spring that they are, or whatever you want, it's a helix like a spring, but you make an inside surface, and because these are all precisely machined, that new inside surface is equivalent to the original thread. So now I can take a 3 16, or excuse me, a 3 8 16 threaded bolt, and he will thread right inside of these little helicoil inserts. And uh, the insert goes in with um, Loctite, red Loctite in there, which bonds it to the the newly tapped hole. Also, they squeeze closed a little bit as you install them. They're hard to get started, and then you install them. As you install them, you feel the resistance, but they're squeezed and kind of trying to, you know, swell up and out, so they're tightly packed in there. It's a really nice way to put actual threads into a hole and meet uh, specifications for toque, to uh, toque, for torque. I've misplaced my marker cap. Here it is. That's what we're going to be doing here. But it's so, so important that these holes are in the right place. There is some play here, obviously, but not a lot. And as you have more and more holes, you can't be compounding error by having them in the wrong place. So how are we going to do this? I need to drill this by hand because I'm not taking the heads off and having it to send it to the machine shop. And to control a drill gun out here and uh, to have it spinning with that new bit and come into an existing hole and have that um, helical drill bit not catch, hook, move the bit, uh, drill gun in my hands, break the drill bit off is a 
really risky business. And if I were to get started and, and be able to drill, uh, drilling cast iron is not incredibly hard, but it's relatively hard. And I want to be able to go in normal to this surface, which is to say uh, perpendicular to the surface in every aspect, which is a three-dimensional perpendicular. So how do we control it? I've got to make a block that bolts up or can be clamped to this face that already has a hole of the uh, right size through it and make that hole work out exactly where this hole should be and use it as a guide to keep me completely normal to the surface and control uh, the bit when it grabs a little bit and uh, give me something for reference to keep it from going all over the place and allowing that tip of that drill bit to break. I need a block of material of significant thickness with two holes in it that are on this exact layout. How do I get this layout? Uh, the garage method that I'm using is a dial caliper. You can use whatever type of caliper you want. But I put two bolts in until they're pretty snug. And then I pull a dimension as close as I can get to the bottom. And I don't want to be out, way out here because that can add some um, error. And I, I took the spark plugs off when I got the dimension. But I get out here and I get an outside dimension of the pair of bolts. And I want to be in the middle of this one and in the middle of that one, which means i got to be half of the diameter over from here and half of the diameter over from there, which is basically one full diameter. So with just the outside dimension and the dimension of one of these bolts, which I know is 0.375 because they're 3 8 I could uh, subtract it, and then it gives me a dimension uh, from the center line to the center line, which gives me a dimension from one center of one hole to one center of the other hole. And then I got myself a little hunk of aluminum. <laughs> Scrocked a loogie in the wastebasket. And I put it in a vise. I selected my drill uh, press. Not only will that keep me normal to the surface, um, rather than just using a drill gun out here to do this drilling operation, uh, it will also run at a slow speed, which is ideal for metal cutting, and it will allow me to clamp this down uh, to make it less dangerous. But first, I had to lay out those two hole locations in a meaningful way that I could be sure and drill with a reasonable amount of um, tolerance. So I quickly opened up the, I put a little bit of marker with a fat chisel tip primer, uh, permanent marker on the side of this aluminum block. I set the dial caliper. I struck along there, so I don't know if you could see, just scratched a line, just an arbitrary, arbitrary line. And then I opened up the draws to the dimension that I had discovered was the center of the holes. And I just pulled it across that line and that created two pairs of, um, or it created a pair of crosshairs. And I got myself a, a center punch. Is he mangled? It just needs to be sharpened. Uh, huh. Anyway, works for my purposes. Uh, you get yourself a nice sharp center punch, and you place them right where the two lines meet, and you blast it with the hammer once and twice, and now I have two nice uh, negative conical dimples that will pull the tip of my drill bit in real nice and, and direct it through there, no problem. This one will drill through and uh, come out to the side of the vise right there, and the other one will come through underneath, so I don't have to worry about accidentally uh, drilling into my vise when I need to do that operation. So we're going to drill these holes out, and then hopefully we'll come back and look at bolting it up as a guide and make sure that the other hole looks like it works out exactly right. And we're going to try and compose a more complicated video here than I normally have, because uh, I normally just sort of tell you what I'm about to do, and then we come look at it when I've done it. It's just so hard to put in the time and effort to take multiple... Um, scenes and cut them all together before uploading, but we're going to try. All right, we'll see you.